Okay, so welcome back to my Paradox tutorial series and now I'm going to do a little bit of breakdown of all the bases I used and these were almost all an 808 base which I have heavily distorted in lots of different ways. I've actually got a little sample pack that will be up on my website which features all of these 808 bases that I made for this project. So what I did was take a very clean, just standard 808 sound from a sample pack and then I've run this through loads of different types of distortion and effects. It's gone in the emu, it's had some Z-plane stuff go to it. Anyway, I think someone linked me a while ago this Dogs on Acid article about Optical who just did all this crazy like moving 808s or something. I, can't, I haven't actually listened to the track yet, but it inspired me to just take an 808 bass and see how far I could run with just one bass and loads of resampling techniques. I might just firstly show you how to make those cool wobbles. So what I've got is this just very standard 808 bass sound here. And what it is, it's actually in the processing. So what you've got to do to make to actually play these sounds is just to play two notes next to each other. And they end up playing off each other and creating these crazy wobbles. And you can speed up the wobbles. But two next to each other creates a really, really cool sound. And then if you then go and add pitch modulation and things like that, you can just get really, really cool results. But the thing is, it's actually in saturating the sound in the right way and distorting it to get this sound. Like if I take these two effects off, you've got an interesting subby hit, but it's not really giving you that wobbling effect that we're looking for. And even that one's still not quite there, but suddenly, like, it's like magic, these two plugins. And I was trying to figure out how I did this, and I, I couldn't even remember what I was doing. So I had to go and look in my old projects, but these are the plugins I'm using, and these are the settings. Okay, so actually, the native distortion in Renoise is really good for this, and it's almost as good as all these expensive plugins. Well, this one was actually free, but this Vertigo one definitely cost me some money. And the just native distortion in Renoise is great for making these wobble sounds. So sounds like complete naff with nothing on it as soon as you add a little bit of this razor it sounds like those crazy um sounds like they're smashing it in the emu what it does to it it's super wild anyway that was the basis of creating those wobble sounds and then once you have the wobble i would resample out so now I've actually mapped resample to number four on my numpad, so I can just press number four and it will just resample for me that little bit. And I have this really juicy, uh, wobbly sound. But if I just show you with this modulation, you can just get really crazy things happen if I come. So if I come in pitch and I start nothing and then I bring it up, and bring it up, and then I go, maybe let's make it like 24. Okay, cool. But the problem is, is it's running out of loop. So let's go and put forwards loop in here. See if we can get this looped up. Whoa, and then let's bring that down. Oh, it's too crazy. Let's go to 0. Uh, I want these to be at 5, 0. 0.5, so it just goes 12 semitones. Whoa. Oh man, now that is nasty. That's just like instant drum and bass bangers right there. So what you've got to do is take a AOA bass sound, just a really standard one, play two notes next to each other, distort it a little bit, resample that, and then start putting pitch envelopes on it, and you will just get the craziest results. So that's DMB magic right there. And let's move on with some more of the bass stuff I've done in this track. Whilst I have those really accented, exaggerated, distorted bass sounds, I've also got this kind of more standard, still slightly distorted A08 bass sound, which is playing the more rhythmic side of the bass. Pretty standard stuff there, but what I want to show you here is this method of actually programming 808 bases or any sustained bass. And I've been always been trying to figure out what's the best way to do it. And I think this is the the best way. So you will see with people with their 808 bases, they will often actually not do what I have here. 
and they will have the sustain down and then they will just program with the decay and have the instrument on mono so the instruments are going to cut off the decay of the sound when the next one hits and that is a very viable technique but I think a slightly more flexible one is actually to whack the sustain up and then the decay doesn't actually matter anymore and you can use a little bit of release and release helps sounds in general sound a bit more natural but the problem with having release on bass usually is that it starts to overlap with the next bass sound and we don't want that so what we do to get around that is actually put it on its own mute group so you don't need to mono the track you just need to put it on its own mute group and now it works perfectly if I actually show you without the mute group on you can hear if I make this a bit longer you can see it starts to like clutter up the hits and it doesn't work very well uh, let's make that back there but if you put it on its own mute group Every hit's going to cut the previous one off, but you can use sustain and release to more accurately program your bass sounds. So the way to make these bass lines interesting, and Paradox will do this a lot, is to use a little bit of syncopation. So you can keep quite simple patterns and simple with the what the notes you're playing, but just a little bit of syncopation is going to make things interesting. <laughs> And what I mean by syncopation is focusing a little bit on the offbeats. So you can kind of see in Renoise where the highlights are, the lighter gray highlights, they're going to be your on beats and the ones in between are going to be your off beats. And so I'm doing a little bit of syncopation here and I'm doing a little bit more actually in this one. It's about kind of using those off beats, but also about the kick and the bass relationship. And that's what's going to give you cool grooves when you're working with these 808 basses. So I showed you a little bit of this before, but actually using pitch envelopes on your bass sounds to make them more interesting is something I'm doing all the time. And you can just duplicate the same bass sound and use different envelopes to create all these different variations. I'll show you a little example here and then I can just quickly show you what I'm doing with the envelope. So there's a cool little bass sound at the, at the end and it's all about the pitch modulation. And if I go and show you here, the sound, if I go to pitch, you can see I'm doing this envelope here, but if I take the envelope off, which is fine, but it's not doing anything special, but with this envelope, has that nice like rolling over sound, and it sounds really cool in the track. As well as pitch envelopes, you can use LFOs. And in this one, I'm actually doing a pitch envelope and a LFO combined. So that's working really nicely as well. And it's just making these bass sounds more interesting than just like, ah, that's, that's the whole idea anyway. One last thing I want to talk about is to do with that cool wobble bass we created in the beginning. Now, yes, uh, I'm doing some pitch modulation and all kinds of other stuff here. And I'm mainly using this loop point so that I can actually extend the note so it can go through all that pitch modulation. But what's also happening is because of wherever I put the start and end points of the loop markers, that's also creating a rhythm uh, of a certain type of wobble. And so that's going to play off against your track as well. So you can move around these slice markers to maybe include like a whole nother um, wobble to create different rhythms against your track. <laughs> Right, so let's get into some of the instruments. Now, I've been talking lots about using pitch effects in the bass noises to create cool effects. And I've also been doing this in the instruments. And this is definitely something you'll hear Paradox using a lot. It's a very good technique to create eerie samples and to make things go a little bit off kilter, but it also just brings sounds alive when there's pitch movement. And here I've got this sound, if I play it without the pitch. It's a cool sound, I created it using some of those dubby, re, uh, dubby effects and then I resampled it. 
But with this pitch envelope, and if you actually look at it, I'm doing a little bit of an up pitch before I'm going down. It just completely changes the sample and it just makes it a million times more usable in the track and more lively. What I'm also doing with this sound is a few different things and I do this a lot in Renoise where I'm using this sound over and over again and it gets boring to use the same sound for like three whole um, eight bar sections. And so what I'm doing is in the first one, I've got it bandpass filtered really low. And that's in the build section. So it's a little bit more ominous, but you're not quite revealing what's happening. And then I've also got this version of the Sam where I've got this uh, WUB filter LFO on, which is essentially LFO modulating filter cutoff but it's doing a bit more of like a wubbing. It's subtle, it's like a tremolo, but very subtle. And then I'm going into one that's doing a lot less wubbing. So all I'm really doing here is just very subtly changing the same sound, but changing the modulation on it. And it's a good way to just keep sounds interesting and not make them fall flat when you keep repeating them over and over again. Right, so let's quickly have a look at the vocals. I was very lucky to be able to convince my girlfriend to do a little bit of humming for this track, and she's got a really lovely voice. Um, but we did have to use quite a bit of autotune just to make it work. So that's really doing a lot of the heavy lifting there. And then I've just done some very standard vocal stuff with uh, a compressor. I'm pulling away some of the low end that's not really necessary and then lots of delay and reverb. So those are your kind of real standard things to do with a vocal take. <laughs> I think you can hear there in the background, I've actually got the Amen playing because I just recorded her. I didn't even record her properly and I still was recording out the monitors so you can actually hear the background music playing. But I think it's fine. It doesn't all have to be super precise stuff, especially when you're working in a mix like this, which has got loads of delays and stuff flying everywhere. It's actually okay to have a little bit of rough sounds like that. But if I quickly show you maybe pre autotune and post, you should probably kill me for doing this, but here you go. It's an interesting key that she's in there, but it's not quite the right one. And then just, I've like literally got the auto-tune on max settings here, and then now it's in the song key. So yeah, I think it sounds really beautiful actually once it comes out and the way I'm doing it here is I've actually sliced this um, all up into all of the, the words that she's saying. And that way I can program it really precisely and keep it all nicely quantized. So the other thing to maybe talk about is the actual speech that I've used in this and I've taken these uh, samples from Kill Bill. The venom of a black mamba can kill a human being in four hours. But I've run them through um, this little Alter Boy plugin is great for just manipulating sounds. The venom of a black mamba can kill a human being in four hours. So it's got loads of uh, reverb and delay. You can hear it's picking up some of the S's there, but I just kind of left all this stuff in. It was kind of rough, all of that. And then this one again. The black mamba. But if I remember, this the black mamba one came through. The black mamba. Sounds very cool, but the and you can hear how much reverb I put on there. I've put loads of compression as well. Loads of compression and like f nearly 50% mix with just h smashing everything in reverbs and delays basically is I think the way to go for this style. And I remember doing some really crazy processing for this one. So yeah, just to get this, because it was sounding really dead, these two ones here. You just couldn't hear what they were saying above all the music. So I've had to really drastically like pump up all these high frequencies.
just sort of sits above the mix. Okay, so that really wraps up the production stages of this Paradox Breakdown and I've probably got one more video to come. I'm just going to briefly go through some of the mixing and then I think that's really going to have completed this whole series. So yeah, that's really it for me today and I will catch you very soon with that last bit. Peace.